Hi everybody, Adam Steele here, and this is the last episode of the Reaper 101 guide. This is where we're going to talk about controlling Reaper with external hardware, so control surfaces, uh, phones and tablets, uh, MIDI keyboards, making things happen inside Reaper using, basically, your hands. This episode, like all the episodes in this series, is brought to you by the Ultimate Reaper Guide from Pro Mix Academy, where we go into all of this and so much more detail right from the very beginning of getting started with production all the way through to advanced tips and tricks that'll do some cool stuff. And then I will be recording, mixing and mastering an entire song in Reaper and showing you every little step of what I do to make that happen. So stick around. Click the link in the description below. I'll see you there. Now, Reaper is very versatile in the ways that it can be controlled. First one, and probably the most simple one to look at, would be using MIDI and just simple MIDI. So I've got an Archuria keyboard next to me, and just for now, let's say it's just a simple keyboard with some simple sliders. I can see, luckily, over here, as I move each one, it tells me what's going on. So when we're using MIDI that's not just for playing notes, quite often we're using what's called CCs, or control changes. This slider, for example, it tells me that it's CC number 72. There are 127 of them. And I can see on the screen there that it's going from 0 to 127, which is minimum to maximum. So I've got my MIDI keyboard plugged in and working. And under MIDI devices, I have this MIDI keyboard selected to enable for control. That's quite important. Without the control input, it won't be allowed to do any of this. And so I want to control, uh, let's say the amount of drive on this reverb. So I want to open my automation here and I'll tick drive so we can see that and then I'm going to hit learn and then I'm going to move this this MIDI and we can see here that it's gone MIDI channel 1 CC72 arm envelope for selected parameter and so I can hit OK on that and that is now ready and so if I change on my reverb we can see that we've got our reverb with one of our uh, automation lanes open and now if I change the automation mode to something like touch or latch or right, now if I change that, you can see suddenly that's moving on screen as I move it. So if I hit play, just jumped over the lazy dog. And now if I hit space, and that became an automation parameter based on my regular old MIDI keyboard. Now this particular MIDI keyboard doesn't have feedback or anything. It's not got motorized faders. That's a whole different thing. But before we move on, let's look at the other side of MIDI, which is actual control surfaces using MIDI. So if I go to Options and Settings, I talked earlier about the fact that there's MIDI and DAW versions of this Archuria keyboard. So the DAW version, if I click the DAW button on my keyboard, that is now configured specifically to control Reaper. And the way it's going to do that is if we go to the control surfaces section down here and add a control surface. So there are lots of different options. The one that I tend to use is Mackie Control Universal. Mackie Control MCU, Mackie Control Universal is very common. Um, a lot of control surfaces that don't support that support Huey, H-U-I, which is kind of the Pro Tools standard and you can switch between them. So I'm going to go Mackie Control Universal MIDI input from Archuria Keylab DAW, output Archuria Keylab DAW, and that should, if I hit OK and OK, be ready to go. Now, if I hit play on the keyboard, jumped over the laser. that's got play and stop and record and loop and undo and other Reaper specific functions that can now be sent from this keyboard. And we can see the faders are moving as I move this fader bank. because that's in Reaper control mode. And so now if I was to change, if I had more than eight tracks on here, it would only control the first eight. Ah, the reverb is on latch mode, of course, for the volume. But if I wanted to control more of them, I would have to change the bank. And so I think I would have to find a way on my keyboard of doing that. 
So that's that's control surface dependent, but when you bank switch, you should find that then channels nine to 16 move and so on and so on. You can have multiple controllers all at once. At one point I had several controllers, one did channel one to eight, one did nine to 16, one did 17 to 24. And the way that I did that is I simply added another control surface and then I changed it to be surface offset. So I offset each one by eight tracks. 16 tracks, 24 tracks. So that way each one, when it said, okay, this is track one, it would correct itself and go, no, actually this is track nine, or no, actually this is track 17, and so on and so forth. That way you get kind of as many keys as you like. That's how things like the old Tascam 24 track motorized fader controller worked, is it would send three banks offset from each other. There are also some options in here for some quite specific controllers like the PreSonus fader ports, the Behringer BCF 2000s, Frontier Alpha Track, uh, an old Yamaha L1X if you can find one of those. And those are specifically kind of patched in so you just define the inputs and outputs and get going with those. But the one that I use the most is OSC. OSC is very powerful indeed because it's kind of like the next step beyond MIDI where you can program in some really complicated setups. One of the things I'm going to do is bring up my phone and an app called Touch OSC. And so I'm going to remotely control things on Reaper the way that I define them. So I'm going to just, I'll just call this phone. That's just a name for us. Uh, pattern configuration, you have to set up a specific layout on your Touch OSC or OSC app so that they know which controls mean what and they can talk to each other properly. In my case, I'm going to use the Logic Touch preset because that's, I'm also going to set screen recording because Logic Touch is quite a useful way of using sliders and faders on a phone screen. And so I'm going to change this to device IP port mode. And so device port uh, looks under OSC. So the local IP address of this is 192.168.1.97 by the look of things. Configure device IP plus local port would probably be quite useful here because then I can have the listen port be correct, be 8000. Uh, it tells me the IP of the Mac is 0.26 at the end, which I need to configure on here so that they can talk to each other. And then I can hit the listen button here and go hit done. And that will bring up the logic touch system here. And if everything is right, then I should start seeing things go on in here and I'm not seeing it. So let's find out why. Ah, because it's not 0.26, it's 0.1.26. That's user error. Do make sure there's no kind of spelling mistakes, but that's where the listen function can be quite useful because now, there we go, every time I move something on the screen, I can see it all happening on the little listen function here. So what I can do now is close this, hit OK. And now all the details have been sent through to Touch OSC. I'm on the master channel. If I go up and down on channels, then I can see you know, Mike, Dave, all that kind of stuff. And now I can change volumes. I can have record input set or not set, record arm set. Um, I can hit record, play, stop. I can uh, go backwards and forwards a little bit as needed, which is really useful if you're, say, uh, a drummer and you're recording yourself in the live room and you've got the whole setup in a control room like this and there's only one of you. I can now do all the remote control through Touch OSC through here and it's really quite useful. And there's some tabs at the top to do some more fine integrations, send volumes, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there are different layouts. Like I said, there's Logic Pad, which is like iPad. Uh, if you've got a tablet, there's a lot more faders on there. So, and there are, there are other OSC applications too. It's not just phone apps. You can integrate it with whatever you like that supports OSC. You can get some really quite kind of deep integrations going. Last but not least, the PS de Resistance is the separate web control interface that Reaper generates itself. So if we go back into our settings and OSC, let's just delete the phone, delete the Mackie control, and we're going to add something else. We're going to add web browser interface. 
Now, what that's gonna do, you can add a username and password if you need extra security on your network. My network here is secure and locked off. And so there are a few different things you can look at. There's lyrics, if you've got lyrics inside your Reaper project where it will come up in real time. There's index, which is the basic one. Uh, there's fancier, which is a slightly more pretty version of a mixer. Uh, let's start with index. And so the access URL, it says here, is an, a, a whole nasty string of numbers. What I could do instead is use rc.reaper.fm. Let's call this steel and then hit apply settings. There we go. So now I can go to rc.reaper.fm slash steel. And that only works on my personal network because all that's going to do is reach out to the Reaper uh, website for this little identifier and then fill in that horrible number. And so this has now come up with Reaper's web interface and I'm using this in Chrome on my phone. You can use it on laptops, tablets, anything you like. And I can slide this around. I can click on a particular track and that will open it up and show me the fader. So I can have that anywhere I like. And that's a very different way of looking at things that's much prettier. If I unlock my phone's orientation, that kind of does something. But if I change this to fancier.html and then apply the settings, I can change this again to be much nicer looking with a scrub wheel and with some very funky features. The, the master's currently set way down. <laughs> but yeah, this looks a lot nicer. It takes a little bit more uh, of your mobile device, but my phone's pretty new, so it can handle all this. And you can see all the you know, receives and sends, mutes and solos, all that kind of stuff. You can change hardware output levels, all that kind of stuff. The one that really interests me is one called moreme.html. Now, if I re refresh this, uh, nothing's going to happen uh, because I need to have hardware headphone outputs. Oh. So what I'm going to do is just quickly use the SWS QBus generator. I talk about this more in the Ultimate Reaper guide. Uh, you can make your own headphone mix uh, very, very quickly. But let's just say analog five and six uh, from the stuff that I've got. Create QBus. Boom. Now I have a solo defeated headphone bus. I'm going to call it HP1. Uh, if I refresh on my phone now, I can select that as HP1 headphone one. And that's now populated as a headphone mix. So all the things that I change here will change what that person on those two on output five and six hears on their mix and not affect the master output. So I can now have that kind of control for each member of the band. They just log in with their phone to this IP address. They select their headphone mix and they go. If you're a little more security conscious, you could have your own locked down tablets that, that connect to this. That's something I've done before. I used to have five iPad minis in here, which I got on a deal. And I would open this page up and then lock it down in accessibility mode so that they couldn't get out of that uh, address or out of that browser. So then they were locked to using that just for their levels. So what you could do and what I've done in the past is have two copies of the web browser interface, one that is for levels and play and stop and control that would be mostly for my benefit and then one that would be for each band member and they would have their own uh, headphone level control. And it's a very quick way, once that's set up, of getting the entire band out of your hair. So they're not saying, oh, can I have more snare in the headphones or anything like that? They're just doing it themselves. They can go, more of that, please. And again, that's not affecting your mix. And because that Cubus that I generated is solo defeated, if I want to solo a track to listen to it, they don't get that solo. They get to hear everything else. So no problems on that end. So yeah, there's so much to go out with control surfaces that make Reaper really come alive. I'm usually much more of a keyboard and mouse kind of guy, but if you're more hands-on, you can do things this way as you see fit. I hope you enjoyed this. Check out the Reaper Ultimate Guide on ProMix Academy in the link down below, and I'll see you around. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Goodbye.